Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. And if I'm talking, well, quite slower than before, is the one that I have inside of the lip. And as for today's video, we have the review of the Adrenaline 23.11.1 drivers. And as I say in all my videos, 23 is the year, 2023, 11 is the month, November, and 1 is the revision in that same month, so the first revision of November. And 23.11.1 is also a lucky number or a lucky set of numbers for people using Polaris and Vega cards, so basically the RX 400, 500 series and the Vega series cards, because after the 23.9.2 drivers, they didn't have any support. Um, they didn't have support for the 23.9.3, I believe, 23.10.1 and 23.10.2, they did not have any kind of support, but they do now. The 23.11.1 drivers are indeed supported by the Vega and Polaris cards, although they are different driver versions, but we'll talk about that. And I know that's a bit unusual, but it might actually be a good thing, like today's sponsor, in this channel at least. Have you ever traveled abroad and some of your favorite applications and websites got restricted? That always happens to me when I travel to Switzerland. Gladly, with NordVPN, that's not an issue. All you have to do is open the application on your computer, tablet or smartphone, go to the list, select your country and press connect. And you can go even further and unlock things that aren't available in your country by connecting to others. And NordVPN also focuses on your privacy and security with malware and threat protection, dark web monitor, and they don't track or share what you do online, which is actually something hard to see nowadays. Use the link in the description for an exclusive 4 extra months when you subscribe for a 2 years plan and start enjoying what you want, where you want. Now let's start with the release notes. Firstly, we have new feature highlights with new game support for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, like a dragon Gaiden or Gaiden, the man who erased his name, the Invincible and JX3 Ultimate. As for Radeon Boost support, we also have a new game now with Alan Wake 2 being supported as well. And now we get one of the most interesting things for people inside or actually using machine learning, which is direct ML improvements and optimizations for stable diffusion, Adobe Lightroom, DaVinci Resolve, UL Pro Cyan AI workloads on AMD Radeon RX 600M, 700M, 6000 and 7000 series graphics. And this basically means that if you are using any of these softwares, once again, DaVinci Resolve, Stable Diffusion, Adobe Lightroom are really, really used softwares. And if you're using them, well, with the 6000, 7000 series and some mobile GPUs, you can finally use the AI course presented uh, on the 7000 series. And you can have, even without the AI course, you can have better performance with DirectML on older cards like the 6000 series and the 600M series, meaning that, well, it's a great thing. It seems that AMD is finally going a bit more towards AI. A little bit too late in my opinion, but always good. Also, I have to state that although these drivers say and they actually have support for Radeon Boost with Alan Wake 2, they don't, uh, they don't show any kind of new game support for Alan Wake 2. And the last official drivers or even the optional drivers were the, um, the optional drivers were the 23.10.2 and they mentioned nothing about Alan Wake 2 and they indeed did not support Alan Wake 2. So we know that Alan Wake 2 is supported because if it supports Radeon, if Radeon Boost supports Alan Wake 2, it means that the drivers already support Alan Wake 2 like on the Alan Wake 2 drivers. Uh, and I already tested it and the performance is the same as the Alan Wake 2 drivers, sometimes slightly better. So it's a good thing, but I just had to mention it. As for the fixed issues, we have performance metrics overlay may report NA for FPS on various games, something that has been troubling lots of AMD gamers and finally is fixed, or at least AMD sa says it is. Lower than expected performance in Counter-Strike 2 on some AMD graphics products, such as the Radeon RX 7600, also a nice fix for the Counter-Strike 2 players. Intermittent flickering may be observed in Total War Pharaoh's menus after changing graphic settings, also a bug for several driver versions that has been fixed. Intermittent flicker may be observed on some textures while playing Alan Wake 2. And actually, um, this fixed issue is one of the fixed issues that were the only fixed issue that was presented on the Alan Wake 2 special driver, so we know that these drivers are included on this driver version of the 23.11.1, even though they don't say that they support officially Alan Wake 2, but 
I'm just saying once again. And this one is actually pretty interesting. Rebuilding Shader Cache may be incorrectly required when relaunching Baldur's Gate 3 using Vulkan API. And once again, rebuilding Shader Cache may be incorrectly required when relaunching Forza Motorsport, which is a very nice thing, meaning that you don't have to rebuild your Shader Cache. It makes no sense because if you build a Shader Cache, you don't have to rebuild it makes no sense. Intermittent driver crash while viewing the credit screen after finishing a race in Forza Motorsport. So if you play the game and you have these crashes, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know if these crashes in Forza Motorsport, them. I can't really speak because of the lip, uh, the lip wound, but anyway. The problem is fixed with Forza, with Forza Motorsport, just leave the, uh, just leave a comment in the comment section, sorry. <laughs> just leave a comment in the comment section and let me and us, the community, know. And the last fixed issue is intermittent black screen or code 31 error in device manager after reboot on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 6700 XT. Something that I personally never saw, but thank god I never saw that, but it was happening it seems and it is finally fixed as well. So no more code 31 errors or black screens intermittently uh, in device manager after rebooting. Nice. But as always, this is not all cotton candy and unicorns or maybe really, really comfortable seats like these ones from Valencia, which I'll be reviewing soon. We also have known issues. And the first one is audio may intermittently become out of sync with video when recording from AMD Software Adrenaline Edition with AV1 Codec. Intermittent corruption may be observed on the racetrack while playing EA Sports WRC, a recently released title, I believe. Stars may intermittently fail to appear while playing Crisis Remastered, which is a bummer. And intermittent micro stuttering may be experienced when running Chromium based browsers on systems that pair an RX 7000 series GPU with a secondary display on an AMD Ryzen 7000 series processor. Well, in this case, I'm using I'm using Mozilla. I u I'm using Opera, which is Chromium. I'm using Microsoft Edge, which is Chromium. Chromium, sorry, on these dual displays uh, with the 7800 XT, and it seems fine. But I do understand that it doesn't work fine for all people. It, it's kind of the luck of the draw. Some people have things easy. Uh, some people have things the hard mode. Some people have the blame. They are to be blamed because they do shit with their computers. Some others don't and they are just unlucky. It's kind of the luck of the draw. And as for the important notes, AMD states once again, for users who previously installed the AMD software inside, inside their preview driver, basically the ones with AMD Fluid Motion, running AMD Cleanup Utility is recommended before installing this driver. If you don't want to run the AMD Cleanup Utility, you can run the U Display Driver Installer and you have this video I made explaining you exactly how you have to do things. And well, guys, that's basically it. The things that I found with these drivers aren't much, really. I got no black screens, no blue screens. Everything went smoothly. And in terms of performance, these drivers also increased performance in Assassin's Creed Mirage. Uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage got a huge performance boost, huge performance boost with um, with the supported drivers, 20 to 30% depending on the GPU. And now we get... Uh, another boost on the top of the boost that we had before. So it's even better now with slightly higher average FPS, but the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows are much better. So the gameplay is also much, much smoother with these drivers compared to even, let's say, the 23.10.2 and even more compared to the 23.10.1 and before. Besides that, it's basically the same as the previous driver. So lots of fixed issues, improved performance in some games and basically the same with slightly smoother feeling in some others. It's basically the same, nothing more than that. Now remember me telling you in the beginning of the video that the 23.11.1 drivers also supported uh, Polaris and Vega. Yes, they do, but not these ones that you saw. So you actually have uh, specific drivers now for the Polaris and Vega cards. And once again, like I told you, it might be a good thing because AMD can separate things and kind of eliminate bugs uh, just for a particular set of GPUs. And in my opinion, it seems okay, actually. As for the 23.11.1 drivers for Polaris and Vega, we have only two fixed issues with intermittent corruption maybe briefly observed while playing Counter-Strike 2 with Vulkan API on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 580. I didn't even know that Counter-Strike 2 had Vulkan API. I'm learning now. And the second one is unable to select summary table in ACCA software in the Fisher's architectural design on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden 7. And as for the known issues, we have only two as well, with performance metrics overlay may report NA for FPS on various games, meaning that once again, uh, this problem persists for the Polaris and Vega cards, it was fixed for the RDNA, for the RDNA ones, 
all the RDNA ones, RDNA 1, 2 and 3, but it still happens with the Vega and Polaris cards. And the second and final one is System Crash or AMD Software Adrenaline Edition may fail to respond when changing tuning preset on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX Vega 64, meaning that people will still have these issues, which is actually a bummer because at least this one is pretty annoying. It would be at least for me, but I'm not using the Vega 64. I have only the Vega 56. And well guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know, let us, the community, know what's your experience with these drivers. Let me know if you have issues or if you have a better experience with the 23.11.1 drivers on older cards like the RX 400, 500 series or the RX Vega series cards. Just let me know. I really want to know. I didn't test those cards for this video, so I don't really know if these drivers are better or worse, but I suppose that they are better. And also leave a comment in the comment section for the most recent cards. If you have an RDNA card, leave a comment in the comment section let, letting me know if you have issues. If, for example, VR performance somehow is improved, if, for example, the high idle power is somehow fixed, because even though some things aren't in the release notes, sometimes we get more fixes, we get more performance, even though they aren't on the release notes, like it happened, for example, with Assassin's Creed Mirage, where it got a performance boost and nothing, nothing was specified in this driver version on the release notes. So all you have to do is leave a, com a comment in the comment section to help the community as a whole. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. And sorry for the speaking, I can't really speak properly. It hurts like hell. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers. The man had said Caldera Street Station. I had to go there. The man had said Caldera Street Station. I had to go there. <laughs>